Welcome back to another installment of Feel Bad About Your Degree. Today you're going to gain the tools to become the mathematician you always thought you could be, and realize there's a mountain of work you don't want to do in order to become that ideal version of yourself. But that's okay, we're all in the same boat. So you're the hopeful undergrad, taking a break from finding your 179th integral to some arbitrary function that some computer algebra system can solve in seconds, so that you can get into the nitty gritty of what really matters in mathematics, proofs. Proofs are rigorous and logically perfect arguments to find the truth value of statements. Statements are simply declarative sentences that have a definitive truth value. They can be true or false, but not both or neither. They can't be matters of opinion. No matter how true the sentence, Ariana Grande is the worst thing to happen to music since fucking hair metal is, the sentence is not technically a statement. Another example is 2x equals 14. You might be thinking, this is clearly a statement. You are stating the fact that 2 times x is equal to 14. However, it isn't. If x is 7, then the sentence is true. Otherwise, if x is anything other than 7, like 8, the sentence is false. The truth value of the sentence is ambiguous, just like the ethical boundaries we try to set for ourselves. Statements can be combined and modified with and, or, and not. This is analogous to the union, intersection, and complement in the set theory video. If you're a computer scientist or software type, I expect your thanks via postcard for those logic gates that fuel your salary. Consider two statements, namely P and Q. The whole statement P and Q is true only when P is true and Q is simultaneously true. This can be illustrated with the following truth table. Notice if either P or Q are false, then the whole statement is false. The statement P or Q is true when either P or Q are individually true or when both are true. This is typically different from the or used in language, which can be used inclusively or exclusively depending on the context. But with the backdrop of logic, P or Q is only false when both statements are false. And here's the truth table. Sorry for scarring you with the knowledge of everything. Here's the truth table. Now not is fairly intuitive as a logical operator, as all it does is negate the sentence. If I make the statement, I'm a worthless piece of garbage. All I have to do is put a not in front and the opposite statement will be true. If only that's how it worked in the real world. To add some focus, let's consider a special type of statement known as a conditional statement. It's any statement of the format, if P, then Q, or equivalently, P implies Q. If I think about my ex, then I will cry myself to sleep. If my friend asks me to hang out, then I will say, no thanks, I'm too busy crying. If I make videos explaining math for people on the internet, then I'll make $1 million from ad revenue and start a global education empire. The key thing to note about the truth value of a conditional is that it is false only when the first statement is true and the conclusion is false. Let's take a look at the example. If I think about my ex, then I will cry myself to sleep. There are four possible scenarios. I think about my ex, and then I cry myself to sleep. I think about my ex, and I don't cry myself to sleep. I don't think about my ex, and I cry myself to sleep. I don't think about my ex, and I don't cry myself to sleep. The only time the statement is false is when scenario number two is what actually occurs. If we want to apply it to a math context, suppose we have the following statement, which we'll take for granted is true. If a function is differentiable on a point, then it must be continuous at that point. We can have a function that is differentiable and continuous, or a function that is not differentiable or continuous. Maybe a function that is continuous but not differentiable, but we can never, ever, ever produce a function that is differentiable but not continuous. If you start experiencing differentiable functions with discontinuities, please consult a mathematician for assistance, as he or she might be able to prescribe you a course in real analysis. Please do not take real analysis if you experience problems with logic and carpal tunnel. Side effects may include loss of sleep, existential dread, and contemplation of the philosophical implications of different types of infinity, a sudden need to duel all of your enemies, and hyper-rationalizations of eccentric behavior. If you start playing demons for more than four hours, please stop crying and see your professor immediately. With conditional statements, there are also biconditionals, which are more powerful statements to prove. Essentially, it's a statement of the form P implies Q and Q implies P. This is a statement that declares that two individual statements are in fact equivalent. For example, if x is even or y is even, then x times y is even. What is also true is that if x times y is even, then x or y must be even. This might seem trivial, but this subtle difference is essential to some of the most powerful theorems in mathematics. 
And to the algebraists out there, this is assuming that X and Y are integers not in any cyclic subgroup nor with any operations mod n or anything like that. Go back to thinking a plus b squared is a squared plus b squared. All that said, I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more, I encourage you to like and share this video and share some of your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for your time and keep learning.